Well, look at what the cat dragged in. <laughs> I have Mark Painter here with me. He's also uh, at the UCLA State of the Art Urology Conference, and he'll be speaking tomorrow for a couple hours on coding, billing, practice management. Yeah. And I thought I'd drag him in here and ask him about some of the current uh, situation going on, what you're seeing through PRS regarding coding and billing. All right. Yeah. So there's a couple of things that are going on. Um, number one, you know, we've been talking about the E and M changes upcoming, uh, and that's we're starting to hone in. And actually, ran through uh, at the, one of the last meetings we did what a what a note would look like under next year's guidelines versus this year's, and it was a three versus a four with just what we put on the slide. So. Um, and then we're still starting to look as I've been hopping around and looking at all the, the EMRs that are out there, that none of the EMRs are really prepping for this at all. Um, and so one of the things we're really talking about is, and I had a couple of conversations with a couple other guys about how they're going to have to basically learn E&M coding all over again because they've been relying on their EMRs to suggest the codes for them and, and the EMRs won't be able to do it. Yeah, and, and when it comes to even the current EMRs, they're not, I, I use all scripts, they, it, it is not capturing all of the nuances when it comes to medical decision making. And come 2021, E&M is going to be completely driven by medical decision making. So a lot of urologists who are dependent on their EHRs, well, that's not going to work, and they're going to be probably underutilizing, under undercharging, and leaving a lot of money on the table. Uh, across the board, I mean, and, and, and even ones that had at least, a, an, a, a, we'll say, a resemblance to a, an MDM coder, um, those aren't going to be even close because, you know, we're changing the way we're counting the presenting problems. We're changing the way we're counting data. The risk, they never counted well. Um, so, yeah, I mean... You're going to lose a lot of money on if you're if you if you don't actually understand what you need to do. Um, I actually also was talking to another guy about how he's going to rearrange his note um, and looking at putting the HPI and the the assessment and plan all in the assessment and plan, yeah, so yeah, that you really because yeah. you really don't need review of systems and all the other stuff that's there. So that now you can put you can really actually put a nice compact note yeah. together, yeah. and he was trying to figure out where am I going to put it in my just in my EMR. So, um, so which yeah, is because another. because the assessment plan section for me uh, the the number of characters is limited. Right. So I can't really have a so it forces. I mean, I I've always been try I always try to be very very concise in my notes because I know other people are reading it, especially in assessment and plan. So I will try to be super succinct. And uh, that's going to force everyone. Now, with 2021 coming, it's going to force everyone to obviously, number one, change the way they document their ENM visits, and number two, hopefully, make everyone more succinct when it comes to documentation. Yeah, and 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 it sh and it should, in the long run, make your note easier to share with other people, and hopefully, other specialties will actually get get on the program, yeah. so that now you're not looking at these ridiculous six, seven-page notes. Um, just to get, just to get caught up on where yeah. your patients are. What else are you seeing? I know, I know. Last time we spoke, you had uh, there was a practice whose uh, BCGs were being denied because of lack of consent, apparently, with every single BCG. Yeah. So um, we've, we we're now doing a second round. Um, we uh, were success were successful in arguing the the consent issue um, that. You know, the patient was there and was obviously there for services and understood their care and the informed consent was a non-issue. But now they're going in and pulling AUA guidelines and pushing a different set of rules at them. So it's, you know, it's basically whatever they can to deny is really what they're doing. This group is sticking by their guns and, and it's absolutely ridiculous. Like they're saying they're denying a CISTO because they didn't list the size of the scope or the angle that was used for, of the lens. Oh I mean, just gosh. unbelievable stuff that they're playing with. I, I think, I don't know. I, I don't know what the solution is. I mean, you, you document all that, or do you just kind of drop that pair? Well, I, have, I mean, personally, I'd say drop the pair. Anybody, <laughs> that, any, anything that's going to that length, any group that's going to that is not somebody you want to be in business with, likely. But you can't let it go now. Yeah. I mean, so we just, you know, I, I think we beat them down and then see if we can drop them. <laughs> that's what I do. Yeah. Yeah, one thing I started doing is that um, I looked at all of my payers, 
and who does the largest number and who is the poorest, poor, the worst payer. Instead of dropping them right off the bat, practices may want to throttle or uh, close the panel or limit the panel or limit the number of new patients that see from that payer and eventually transition them out of your payer mix. I, I agree. I mean, I think that people don't utilize their schedule. Um, or data, or what or, they know about data. their practice. I mean, so, but I mean, it, that's, that's kind of that front end, back end. You know, you use their data to really get to the point where you understand who you don't want. And then you turn around and you put your schedule in place so that you can actually build a practice that's geared towards the right folks. And you can slowly but surely phase payers out of existence without having to you know, disrupt your business. Yeah. And that's, it's a, it's a huge tool that goes completely under, un, uh, unrecognized and unused. So I don't know what can be done to help practices see that they actually need to slow down, talk to administrators, billers, coders, and maybe have them come up with this data. That's, that's the hard part. You can get the admin people to come up with the data, but you need someone kind of smart who can think about this, think through this, and then come up with a suggestion. That, that is the hard part. I can hire people to just simply push data to me, but then st I need someone who can analyze the data and tell me, here are the implications, this is what I need to do. Yeah, and I, I think the other piece of all of that is, you know, making sure you have all the data um, when you're going through, and, and that takes a little bit of digging. Because, um, you know, sometimes you get into a plan and there's a TPA that's attached to it, that all of a sudden it's really four or five plans that are affected by dealing with that one contract. And like a multi-plan. A multi-plan, exactly. Or, and then, of course, you've got payers with multiple benefit categories and trying to lump them all together and figure out kind of where they are. And I do think, you know, pulling that data and really looking at the data is sometimes done too narrowly. Um, when you really want to understand what a, what a contract is, you really want to look broader at those things. So, so being able to pull the data out of your system um, is big, but being able to then slap in all the tools that you need, you know, like RVUs and CPT codes and modifiers and actually take reductions so you're comparing apples to apples is, is the next step. And so, you know, hopefully... Um, you know, you can find somebody to do it. I mean, we, we run a, a number of, of analyses for folks, um, but we have to take a full data dump yeah. out of their system to actually get the, the reports back. So you're saying PRS network, you, you do that analysis? Yeah, we do. Okay. Um, so we've, we've done it for several groups to really take a look at where their contracts really are. The, I, and, and I got to tell you, one of our biggest problems across the board is not being able to get a hold of the original contract. Yeah. Um, for a lot of practices, I mean, these they're, they're evergreen. They've been around for so long. They really haven't paid attention to where they kept them. So um, so you, you kind of start from the back end and push it forward. Um, yeah, that hasn't been stressed enough uh, recently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Getting getting the, the, the contracts and knowing the contracts. Well, yeah. I'm looking forward to your uh, presentation tomorrow. Thank you very much. Yeah, it should be fun. This, this I tell you, this convention is, or this meeting is a really good one. Um, they have a lot of great economic or uh, a lot of great uh, clinical content that they really focus on for the majority and then they give me a couple hours to talk about a couple things and then Dr. Aronson, Aronson tomorrow is going to close up talking about um, medical liability should, which should be interesting yeah. so yeah. Sunday is kind of the the wrap-up day where they package it all back. I, I think Sunday is the most important morning it's going to be the most important. it talks about the economics and also medical legal issues yeah yeah, it's, uh, it's fun, and I, actually, I, I got a lot on the plate tomorrow to cover. So You do. I already looked at your slides. Yeah, so, and I, uh, so I was going to, I've got to switch a couple out, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that, uh, that note in there. That's a three now and a four. Oh, yeah, uh, how a level, it was a, it was a level four, and now it's a level three. Yeah, yeah. we talked about that during well, uh, dinner at that, that. Yeah, so, no, it's the other way around. Now oh, it's the other a three, way. but the, it, it's a four oh, next year. Oh, okay, that, yeah. well, there, okay, that's a different scenario. Yeah, that's a different one, so. I love yeah. it, can't wait. So, it'll be fun. All right, so, see you guys later. Thanks.